Hi there. Good morning. I am Joe with Acapella. Um, so excited you're here today and even more excited about my guest. It's Ben Schulhorn. He is the executive director of Senior Helpers here in Dallas. We've worked together or coordinated care for many, many years. And Ben and his team um, are doing an awesome job with all this COVID and so I wanted to talk to a company. I wanted to talk to a partner in the community on COVID and what we're doing to keep our seniors safe. And um, I just want to uh, say hi, Ben. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you, for Joe, for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, let's, let's talk away. Let's see how we can uh, help each other and help folks. Sounds good. Well, we're talking about COVID. And I looked up some statistics. There are 3.3 million cases worldwide of COVID in Texas. Um, there are only 28,000 cases. There are a lot of people in Texas. 28,000 is a lot of, it's a big number. There have been 782 deaths in the state of Texas. Um, there have only been 104 deaths in Dallas County up to date. Most of those are nursing home residents. In Collin right. County, there have only been 19 deaths. In Tarrant, 53. So we're talking less than 200 deaths in DFW, uh, which tells me that we are doing a great job to stay safe, um, take care of our seniors, and um, we're ready to move forward. So let's talk about, um, just talk real quickly, Bent, about senior helpers. Well, uh, first of all, Senior Helpers has been around the Dallas area about 13 years, so we're not new at this sort of thing. Uh, certainly, the, the COVID brings in a whole new element into our type of uh, care and service and how we do it and, and that. And, I, and unfortunately, I think this is going to be kind of a way of the future. So, you know, we as an agency and most other agencies as well probably have all geared up, retrained all our caregivers, put in pieces in place to keep all our seniors at home safely. Uh, and comfortably, uh, and just kind of like you're pointing out, you know, with the number of deaths and illnesses here in the last eight, nine weeks that we have now been under this quarantine and things, uh, and all of the cases that we're taking care of and senior helpers, uh, we've had zero issues. So we're talking about a little over 100, about 100 families or so, and 140, 150 caregivers was, was not an issue. And that's not to say that we're not doing our part to uh, make sure nothing happens. Uh, statistically, probably it will. But, you know, for right now, we're, we are doing everything that we can, in, including having retrained our caregivers, the way they, they clock in and clock out through our, our automatic system. They get asked questions prior to going to shifts. Um, so every, everything that we know that we can possibly do, we are doing, including uh, giving all our caregivers their PPE equipment that they need, the masks, the gloves, uh, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so far, so good on that end. And I think that's why home care is, I think, very it's going to become more popular. Uh, people are going to have to look at those statistics and say, "Gee, do I want mom or dad on a you know on a cruise ship or in a, a in a big facility?" You know, when, when one person gets sick, it spreads pretty quick. And I think those facilities, by the way, I don't want to throw them under the bus. I think they do a great job, mm -hmm. but I think families need to make those decisions and say, "You know, am I better at home with one-on-one -on -one care or in a in a bigger facility type situation?" So mm -hmm. I think all of us agencies, I think that's an advantage of. Uh, being a, in a franchise or uh, a progressive company like you, like yours, where you look at these things and you take advantage of them. This is going to be the way of the future. I'm, ex I'm actually excited about it. I don't like deaths. My, my, my job is to prevent people from getting sick and dying. Uh, and, but we need to be prepared for the next, the next onslaught, whether it's flu seasons, whether it's COVID-1, COVID-2, whatever it is. We just, this is a good wake-up call for all of us. It is. I think it's just going to be a new normal on how, um, you know, how we handle things and stay protected and keep our staff safe, keep our clients safe. We've had several clients that are in senior living communities that have gone home and have care at home. And they've decided, you know what, maybe I like being back at home, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, you know, that's the beauty of doing that one-on-one -on -one care. Um, I know, and y'all have lots of, Senior Helpers has lots of programs, um, as does Acapella. And we want our caregivers, when they're in the home, um, to know that client. We're, we're not just sitters. And 
I don't know about you, but I just do not like the term sitters. I think it's, it's grossly undervaluing what our caregivers do. Um, they are the eyes and ears for that client. They do the hardest job, the job that nobody wants to do. Um, and just being there for the client, listening, um, observing, um, you know, it's such an important role. And we just, you know, I know we're talking about the front line and how important our front line is. But our caregivers are the front line too. Absolutely. Your caregivers and mine, we have not had one COVID client. Um, we have had not one staff member test positive for COVID. Um, and so that tells me we're doing what we need to do to keep our staff safe. And we're doing, it's not to say it couldn't happen, but anything, the CDC, the state guidelines, we are following and I know Senior Helpers is following, and we just want to keep our clients safe at home. Right. So, Ben, when you go out to the store, what are you doing? Are you masking up, or what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question, Joe, because uh, I'm, uh, I have this, uh, my wife says I have this ability to be uh, oppositional <laughs> defiant. Um, I, you know, I've, I cringe at rules. I've always been self-employed, which is probably why I've been self-employed all my life, is because it's kind of my nature. However, I have a responsibility to others. So I'm wearing a mask, not because I feel unsafe, but because it makes other people feel uncomfortable when I don't. So I'm, I'm empathetic to them. I am masking up, yes, when I go into the store. Uh, our office is probably like yours is. You know, you can't come in anymore. Mm -hmm. and if you do come in, you're going to get a you know, thermometer, you know, mm -hmm. strip top on top of your forehead. You're going to be checked. You're going to wash your hands. You're going to do all of that. But uh, when, I'm out, when I'm out in public, uh, I will wear a mask again, though. I'm not doing it for me because I'm, I'm not fearful of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, I think a lot of us, uh, you know, the reason I got in this business is because for me, this is a purpose driven life. So mm -hmm. God's on my side here. He's mm -hmm. got me. All I have to do is trust and obey. And I'm not going to live in fear. I, I am going to live with realities. The reality is I'm going to do the best that I can. And our staff is likewise doing the very best that they can to, you know, clean up, wash hands, glove up, mask up, whatever needs to be done, whatever makes the seniors feel safe. And to go back to your point about when they call agencies like a sitter service, I cringe at that. Mm -hmm. I really do. Because we, like you just said, we become family. Our mm -hmm. caregivers, oh my gosh, they go to the you know, family's funerals afterwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get, they will, they will almost not take care of their own family to take care of the seniors because they get so attached to them. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can't get in a few facilities where you're one of 16 or 17 people. So I, I know. That, and, and amazing. you know, the statistics are, I think 35, 40% of families, their children live in other cities. And so we do become family. That's <laughs> true. And, you know, um, and I know you have a lot of dementia patients and you all do a wonderful job with dementia training. You know, I wish we had more of that training. Um, and I know you are a big uh, advocate of Tipa, Tipa Snow, Snow and yeah. her training that she does. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about some dementia patients. Do you have any examples of, you know, what do you do someone that is elderly, they've got dementia, um, how are you protecting them um, from all the news, all the news that's going on? You know, if I were sitting at home all day watching the news, I would be terrified and I don't have dementia. So tell me some tips that as senior helpers or Tipa Snow, what would she say right now to, for, for caregivers working with dementia patients? Well, interestingly, we just sat through an hour's uh, training of hers. By the way, you can go to Tipa Snow, you, you know, YouTuber, tipasnow.com. Anybody that's interested in her can find out all this information, but we just sat through uh, using meaningful activities to engage people with dementia. Um, you know, what kind, of, kind of the things that you should do and can do while you're with them. Um, so let me go back to kind of square one. The, we probably, out of the clients that we have, probably eight or 10 of ours have dementia. And I, I say, hey, I'm, I'm a senior. I probably have a little of that, you know, I have some forgetfulness too. But uh, the people that we're taking care of, uh, the one advantage they have with us is that there's has no been dis, no disruption. I mean, we're not the, the, the gates aren't locked. People come see you. You can visit. You you know you can do all of those. Nothing has changed for you. The only thing has changed is what's on the news. 
Uh, and I would say that our caregivers are, are smart enough and we have certainly coached them to, it's, it, to us, it's sort of a non-issue. Life goes on. We're continuing exactly what we have done before with the, with the seniors. And we're, you know, if, if I hear, truly, if I hear that our seniors are sitting there with our caregivers watching the news, we have an issue. Mm-hmm. Most there are, definitely. You know, there, there, yeah, there are things to do. There's our activities, you know, how to keep them busy. Uh, so we ask them to plan their day. Uh, kind of have something to do for uh, the dementia. And as we know, dementia has different levels. Mm-hmm. So depending upon the caregiver that we put into a situation, typically they, you know, they're trained and they know how to handle that particular situation. Mm-hmm. So it hasn't, uh, no one has called me up and said, Hey, my mom and dad are, are overly anxious. They're freaking out. I know it's nothing. Mm-hmm. Our job is to keep them safe and comfortable at home. And that has not changed. Don't you find, I mean, I know for me at acapella, our caregivers, they have really risen to the occasion. And I'm so proud of the job they're doing. Our nurses too, um, they're not showing that, oh my goodness, you know, I, I refuse to take care of Mrs. Smith or Mr. Jones. They're really doing a great job. I'm so proud of our healthcare industry in a whole, as mm-hmm. a whole, but I think our caregivers, um, they really, it's a hats off shout out to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. and I know you've said this before, but you know, we're in a state of emergency right now and I see your stress level is great. You have, you don't seem to be stressed and uh, you're right. You and I both, we've shared this before. We both have a strong faith. And I do agree. I think God's got this. And, um, you know, yes, are we going to be doing things a little differently? Um, yes, we are. But um, God's in control, you know. Really? And, um, you know, we still have seniors, even though we've got this COVID going on, there's still seniors that need us. They need someone to hold their hand. They need someone to listen, to help them remind them to brush their teeth or help them get in the shower so they don't fall. And, um, you know, I just hope with this podcast, people remember our seniors still have needs and um, it's people like senior helpers, acapella. We are here to help and we're here to serve. And, you know, um, you know, just, I know senior helpers, you all are doing everything you can to, um, to keep your seniors safe, you know, and I just hats off to you. So Ben, the, the million dollar question, you have been so successful in Dallas. <laughs> what do you say sets senior helpers apart? Dallas senior helpers, what sets you apart from some of our competitors? Well, in, in, in my first couple of years, uh, you know, I've done this for 13 years. The first couple of years, I, I just said, uh, egotistic, I said was me. Uh, it's not me. Mm-hmm. It, it, it truly is the experience that we have now. Uh, it's the caregivers that we've hired. It's my great caregiver manager who manages the caregivers. Uh, and, and we you know, are hiring the way that we hire and that we, the way we train them, we bring them on board. Now, I will say every agency, I think, says the same thing. And I think every agency probably does, does it. I know in my heart that we do. Mm-hmm. So I think that's part of it. I think that uh, our tip of snow certainly is, is a big thing for us as far as how we train our caregivers to understand our clients with dementia, because as we age, you know, we're getting more and more clients like that, and that will probably will continue. Uh, we have a staying home uh, program, a going home safe program that we've had instituted about six months ago, where when somebody comes in from the hospital, uh, how we bring them home, how we take care of them. I'm sure you have your own way of doing it, but we've really formalized the whole program. Uh, and with about six months ago, we also brought in a program called Life Profile. Mm. Life Profile has been very interesting for me, and I think it does set senior helpers apart in that it's a system, a scoring system as an assessment system, and I probably haven't even told you this, but an assessment system where statistically you can prove to people and show them statistically where their parents are, what kind of help they need, roughly how many hours, who's going to do what, and, and to make sure that the outcome is the way they want. Depending upon wow. the score, we can tell them statistically, and this has been a 15-year survey among seniors, hospitals, doctors. So, I mean, this is not senior helpers made up. This is a program that we found or they found us. And we said, wow. 
And the thing that made me realize is that when we do a profile, in the past when we've done an assessment, no question we try to do our best. We try to staff it correctly. Mm -hmm. But now we know statistically by numbers what we need to do to set the family up for success. If the family sees that, and, and, it, and it's we're talking about safety, uh, let me get my little piece of paper here. We're talking about safety. We're talking about uh, medication reminders. Um, we're talking about uh, the quality of life uh, and independence and that sort of thing. So we know statistically on the med scoring, if they don't get a certain score, Joe, we know they're going to end up in a hospital. And we know and we can roughly tell them how many wow. months out. Wow. But it, what, what that tells us is that when we meet with a family and we go over the score, and by the way, it's 144 safety questions. So that's one. Okay, family, are, you want mom and dad at home. Or Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you want to be at home. In order for you to be home safely, here's what it's going to take. Now, you can take the advice or not, but the, we know statistically, we can prove to you where you are on this scale. And by the way, our job is going to be to make the score better so you need less care. We want to make sure that you're still independent, that you have a certain set of autonomy, and that you have a higher quality of life. And that's what hit me. Until then, I was my job was to take care of seniors as best as I possibly could. Oh, no, now I have an extra charge. My extra charge now is to increase their quality of life. That's awesome. And that's now awesome. I can show people on paper what that what that will take. It takes, as an example, you know, how, you know when you and I go out and do assessments and things, we start families. Half of them, half of them are clueless. They they are they're not clueless. That's the wrong word. But no, uh, they just have no idea. They're overwhelmed. They have no idea. But now we go over all these points with them, and we ask, okay, if we're going to be there four hours a day, and Dad's taking eight meds, who's going to fit the med box? Who's going to get him to take it? Well, okay, we're there at breakfast and lunch. We're going to get those. Who's going? To, who's responsible for that other time? Because we know that if they don't take their meds, if they if they fail in that meds, then you know that's a big part, right? Of nursing. That's stuff. right. If they fail in that. That's you know that's a tantamount to, to more dangerous to slips, falls, tripping, all of that sort of thing. Our job again is to make sure that doesn't happen and increase the quality of life. How do we do that? Make sure someone's responsible for that. Wow, that's wonderful. You know, another thing, Bent. Um, we, what I have our care managers and our, our sales team, their care managers, whenever upsell, you know, I, I do not believe in upselling private duty. I think we, we provide what they need. Um, I never, that's not right. We don't want to take advantage and we know private duty care is expensive. It, yes, it, and a lot good. of people think Medicare is paying for it and it doesn't. But one thing I do is I like our care managers to mystery shop other, there are a lot of choices. And it is amazing that first two seconds on a phone, you can tell what your, your atmosphere, your office is like. When I called you about this podcast, I think it was Megan that answered the phone. Yeah. So polite, presentable. Uh, you could hear the smile in her voice, the, I'm here to serve, what can I do? And, you know, just telling people, you can tell right away if, you know, if they're going to do a good job. That's the first step. Do they answer the phone, you know, professionally? And, um, but just hearing about this, this program, that's wonderful. And, um, you know, just being an RN and being a nurse for so long, I, I can go in and kind of see what's going on in my brain immediately. Um, and, and some people don't have that, you know, um, but that is a wonderful tool. And um, that, that's wonderful to hear that. So um, um, let's talk about um, uh, what do you predict is going to happen in the fall? Let's talk about future. You know, they say there's going to be a second wave. And what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I, first of all, I, uh, remember before nine 11, there were no metal detectors at airports. Mm -hmm. So a whole big, a whole dynamic change took place. I think the same thing is going to happen now. Life is not going to go back to the way it was never. It's never going to go back to the way that where we were just loose and goosey free all over the place is going wherever we want, how we wanted. And we would sit in a, in a restaurant with 400 people. That's the space designed for 300. 
some of those days are gone. We're going to fly differently. We're going to provide care differently. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, in our office, we're, we are buying more PPE stuff. We're preparing for whether, like I said, whether it's the flu or COVID uh, or some other bug that's going to come out there. People initially are going to be fearful, um, you know, right now. Uh, I think then they'll, there may become a lull, maybe not. I mean, as long as the news media stirs it up the way they are, uh, you know, I don't know where it's going to go. Uh, but I, but I do think that I think that agencies like us uh, can can embrace this, not not shirk away from it. And oh my gosh, business is going to get harder. No, embrace this. This is part. This is going to be a new part of caregiving, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we just have to be prepared for it. And we have to make families feel comfortable with it. It's it's okay to feel strange when a stranger comes into your house and maybe has a mask on. But let's mm -hmm. prepare them for those things and why we're doing those things. And by the way, my other you know, I think probably like you, I think I have two responsibilities. One is to take care of the senior. My other responsibility is to take care of the caregiver. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's worried about the caregiver coming into the house. I'm worried about my caregiver going into a house where there is the bug, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it works both ways. So I want to make sure that both parties are as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. And as part of our assessment tool, we will, you know, be able to do that. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I have appreciated this so much. Um, it's just been an honor to have you as a guest. And how can we reach you if someone would like to get more information about senior helpers, need some help at home? What's the best way to reach you, Bent? Uh, well, you can, you can call Megan, and our telephone number is 214-361-7943. Uh, you're always welcome to email me. Uh, my first name is Bent, B-E-N-T. It's strange, I know. It's a whole story in itself. But <laughs> Bent bent at seniorhelpers.com and we'll be happy to reach out and help you any way that we can uh and joe thanks for having me i think this is thank was, you, know, you it's you been and I great. Have always had great conversations and really, i know and you know today in texas we're opening up um it's not business as usual but 25 percent capacity at stores and um <laughs> just get out there support your local businesses like Absolutely. senior helpers acapella go get something to eat have a glass of wine and Let's start this new normal safely and uh, just get our economy going again. So thank you again uh, to a fellow business owner uh, for doing the great job you do. And we will talk to you again soon. Well, thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye.